Egypt became, sometime around 2500 BC, a very rich and powerful kingdom, and they did expand out into the Mediterranean because they have discovered Egyptian remnants, usually these seals with the names of the pharaohs, on the island of Crete and in places uh, in Greece. So we see that there was communication and trade going on at the time. And also at that time, around 2400 BC, they began to build the great pyramids, the great structures which are characteristic of ancient Egypt. Now, the history of Egypt is recorded in the form of the record of the dynasties. And this was done by the man who wrote the history of Egypt in 250 BC. He was named, his name was Manetho. He was an Egyptian priest. He wrote a history of Egypt in Greek. I'll explain later why he wrote it in Greek. But he knew Egyptian history and he read hieroglyphics. He was a, a scholar of Egyptian history and he wrote the history of Egypt and in it he decided to divide the history of Egypt into the royal families that ruled it and he called them the dynasties and that's how we date Egyptian history. So the dynasties, the first dynasty was the one where Narmer was the pharaoh who conquered and united the two kingdoms and then he goes into the first, second, third, and fourth, and he uh, lists the history of Egypt down to his own time, which was about the 30th dynasty. So there were about 30 dynasties in Egyptian history, covering a period of 3,000 years. So on the average, dynasty was 100, but some of them lasted just a few years, and some of them had lasted 200 years. What's interesting about this is that within each dynasty, we can uh, fit certain important events. Now, it was the fourth dynasty around 2500 BC when the Great Pyramids were built. What was the purpose of the pyramids? The purpose of the pyramids originally was to serve as mausoleums for the pharaohs. Now, that also introduces another interesting concept into Egyptian history, and that is the Egyptian concentration on the whole idea of life and death and eternity and the preservation of everything for forever. And so the idea was, or developed, that somehow the essence of the person, uh, the soul of the person, you say, would be preserved by preserving as many physical realities as possible, the most important being the body itself. And so they developed the system of preserving the body by mummification. And pharaohs and other important people were uh, mummified. It in included the preparation of the body by removing the internal organs of the, what we call the, the soft tissues, placing each one of them in a jar for preservation, and then preserving the rest of the body by soaking it in a brine solution of either salt and sodium nitrate for a considerable period of time, and then stuffing the body with stuffing material, uh, either papyrus or uh, wool or something like that, then closing it up, and then encasing it in a long linen strip hundreds of feet long, which was bound in a certain fashion, a very complex fashion. The body was bound up, and then it was encased in plaster, and on the plaster they wrote the prayers necessary to pass over from this life to the future life, and then this plaster was enclosed in a wooden coffin, and usually they might have put a mask on the face, drawing the face of the person on it. And then this might be included also in a stone coffin, and later on when it comes to the pharaohs, in a golden coffin. And that the whole concept of preserving all that can be preserved was evidently very important to them. Obviously, you had to be rich to get this kind of treatment. But there are plenty of these, plenty of the mummies, plenty of mummies around. Also, when it comes to the pharaohs, they were encased in gold, and sometimes in several layers of gold. 
many other things were incorporated with them. Well, what about the poor people? What about the farmers and the peasants and the others? Well, they were also concerned about this, and so we find hundreds of tableaus, that is, a setting like this table, in which they would make either carvings from stone or figures from clay or wood, and they would set up a setting of their life, how they lived. So you see them working in the fields and uh, baking in the bakery and cooking in the kitchen and sitting around the table and eating and playing with the children. And the, all of life was portrayed in these uh, tableaus for preservation, and many of them have been found, many of them have been preserved. So it's obvious that the whole concept of make everything in life permanent, preserve it, everyone has to do this if you want to be assured of continuity from life to death and beyond.